The guidance in this video may help you achieve all of your goals. Let's have a look at Louise Hay's thought, the founder of Hay House and a popular motivational speaker in the United States. In 1984, she published You Can Heal Your Life, a new thought self-help book. In my view, this must be true if there is any problem in the world. So let us examine the origin of this belief. How did we go from being a tiny infant who knows the perfection of itself and of life to a person who has problems and to varying degrees feels unworthy and unlovable? People who already love themselves can increase their self-love. Consider a rose from the time it is a tiny bud until the last petal falls. It is always beautiful, always perfect, and constantly changing. Likewise with us, we are always flawless, always beautiful, and constantly evolving. We are doing the best we can with the understanding, sensitivity, and knowledge we possess. And our understanding, awareness, and knowledge increase. We will conduct ourselves differently. Now is the time to examine some of the beliefs that have been dictating our behavior. Some individuals find this portion of the cleansing process to be excruciating, but it does not have to be. We must examine what is present before we can remove it. If you wish to clean a room thoroughly, you will pick up and inspect each item. Some objects will be the subject of your affection and you will dust or polish them to restore their luster. Some items will require finishing or repair and you will make a mental note to do so. Other items will no longer be useful to you. And it becomes necessary to let go of these things. Old magazines and newspapers, as well as soiled paper plates, can be tossed into the trash bin with ease. It is unnecessary to become upset in order to clean a room. The same principle applies when we clean our mental house. There is no reason to become enraged about the fact that some of its beliefs are about to be discarded. Let them go with as much ease as you would scrape leftover food into the garbage after a meal. Would you actually rummage through yesterday's trash to prepare dinner for tonight? Do construct tomorrow's experiences. Do you rummage through mental trash from the past. If an idea or a belief does not serve you, release it. There is no written law stating that if you once believed something, you must believe it forever. Consider the origins of some of these limiting ideas, such as the belief that I'm not good enough, which may have been influenced by a father who regularly called him stupid. He stated that he desired achievement so that his father would be pleased. But he was filled with guilt, which bred anger. Failure after failure was all he was capable of producing. His father continued to fund his enterprises, following one another. They failed. He employed failure to exact revenge. He made his father suffer, pay, pay. And he was, of course, the greatest loser. Where it originated from, limiting beliefs, a lack of self-love, and a need to gain acceptance from the father. Being like her father, was the last thing she desired. They could not reach a consensus on anything and constantly argued. 
she sought his favor alone. She received only criticism, however. Her body was in constant discomfort. Her father experienced the exact same type of suffering. She was unaware that her wrath was the source of her suffering. Her father's rage was the sole cause of his suffering. A fearful parent was the source of the limiting belief that life is perilous. Another customer viewed life as miserable and arduous. It was difficult for her to laugh, and whenever she did, she felt fear that something terrible would occur. She was raised with the admonition, don't laugh or they'll get you, restricting belief. The feeling of inadequacy stems from being neglected and abandoned. He experienced difficulty speaking. He was accustomed to living in silence. He was convinced he was dreadful after recently quitting narcotics and booze. I learned that his mother passed away while he was a toddler, and he had been raised by an app with whom he hardly ever communicated. To provide an order, he was raised in silence, even as he aged alone in silence, and he resided quietly in his chamber on a daily basis. His lover was likewise a silent man. They spent the majority of their time alone and in silence. The beloved died, and he was alone once more. Exercise. The following activity is to construct a list of everything your parents said was wrong with you. Which negative messages did you encounter? Give yourself ample time to recall as many as you can. What did they say concerning money? What did they think of your physique? What did they state regarding love and relationships? What did they say about your artistic abilities? What limiting or unfavorable remarks did they make? If you can look at these facts objectively and say to yourself, ah, so that's where that belief comes from, then you will be able to determine the origin of that belief. Now, let's dive a little deeper. What other negative messages did you receive as a youngster from family members, teachers, friends, authority figures, and your church? Jot them all down. Take your time and be mindful of your emotions. The concepts that must be eliminated from your consciousness are those that you currently possess. These are the precise beliefs you hold that make you feel inadequate. Considering yourself as a youngster, if you were to take a three-year-old child and place it in the middle of a room, and you and I were to start yelling at the child, telling it it was stupid and could never accomplish anything, would that be acceptable? How it should do this and should not do that and look at the mess it has created. And if we strike it a few times, we may end up with a terrified youngster who sits in the corner or one who destroys the environment. One of these two paths will be taken by the child. However, we will never know what the child's potential is. If we take the same little child and tell it how much we love it, how much we care that we love the way it looks, how bright and intelligent it is, and how much we love the way it does things, it will grow up to be a more loving and caring individual, and that it is acceptable to make errors as it learns 
and that we will always be there for it, no matter what. The potential that emerges from that child will blow your mind. Each of us is composed of a three-year-old child. And then we wonder why our lives don't work when we spend the majority of our time yelling at the child and ourselves. If you had a friend who constantly criticized you, would you want to be around them? Perhaps this was how you were treated as a child. This is regrettable. However, this occurred eons ago. And if you are now choosing to treat yourself the same way, it is even more unfortunate. We now have a list of the negative messages we were exposed to as children. How does this list relate to what you believe is wrong with you? Are they particularly critical? Most likely, yes. We base our life story on our earliest messages. We are all obedient children who believe that they tell us to be true. It would be simple to blame our parents and remain victims for the remainder of our lives. However, that would not be entertaining, and it certainly wouldn't help us get out of our predicament, family responsibility. Blame is one of the most certain ways to remain in a problem. By placing the blame on someone else, we relinquish our power. Understanding allows us to rise above the situation and take charge of our future. One cannot alter the past. Our current way of thinking shapes the future. For the sake of our freedom, we must acknowledge that our parents did the best they could with the understanding, awareness, and knowledge they possess. When we attribute blame to someone else, we abdicate our own responsibility. Those who committed all of those heinous acts against you were equally terrified. The only things they could possibly teach you were the things they themselves had learned. How much do you know about your parents' youth? particularly before the age of 10. If it is still possible to discover the information, ask them. If you are able to learn about your parents' childhoods, you will have a better understanding of their actions. Compassion is gained through comprehension. Try to imagine what it must have been like for them if you are unable to obtain information. What sort of upbringing could have produced such an adult? For your own freedom, you require this information. You cannot be liberated until you've liberated others. You cannot forgive yourself until you have also forgiven them. If you require perfection from others, you are also required perfection from yourself, and you'll be miserable your entire life. I agree with the theory that we choose our parents, as the lessons we acquire appear to be perfectly matched to the flaws of our parents. I believe that we are all traveling through eternity indefinitely. We incarnate on this planet to learn lessons essential to our spiritual development. We select our gender, our race, and our nation. And then we search for the ideal set of parents who will mirror our characteristics. Visiting this planet is similar to going to school. Attend beauty school if you wish to become a beautician. You attend mechanic school if you wish to become a mechanic and law school if you wish to become an attorney. The parents you choose this time are experts in your chosen field of study. We have a tendency to accuse our parents of wrongdoing when we reach adulthood. 
but I believe we choose to listen to others. When we are young, our older siblings are comparable to gods to us. If they were discontent, they likely look it out on us physically or verbally. They may have made statements such as, I'll tell on you if you're instilling guilt. You are still a child, so you cannot accomplish that. You are far too ignorant to play with us. Educators have a significant impact on our lives. In fifth grade, I was informed by a teacher that my height prevented me from becoming a dancer. I believed her and put my dancing ambitions on hold until I was too old to pursue dancing as a profession. Do you comprehend the exams and your grades? Were only to determine how much knowledge you possess at a specific time? Or were you a child whose self-evaluation was based on tests and grades? Or do you have early friends who share their own erroneous life information with us? The other students at school can tease us and leave us with lasting wounds. My last name was Lonnie when I was a child, and children used to refer to me as insane. Not only do neighbors have an impact due to their comments, but also because we ask, what do the neighbors think? Consider what other figures of authority had an impact on you as a child. Of course, there are also the powerful and highly persuasive claims made by advertisements, periodicals, in the media, on television, and in print. Too many products are sold by making us feel unworthy or wrong if we don't buy them. We are all here to overcome our innate limitations. We are here to recognize our own magnificence and divinity regardless of what they told us, whoever they were. You have negative beliefs to overcome, and I have negative beliefs to overcome.